Greetings to everyone watching. We, we greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Gilders One Hearts, Methodist, non-Methodist, every viewer watching at home, we greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I am Kubeko Polani Fata, your host, and I'm glad to be part of the discussion that we're going to be having today, or a talk or a presentation that Oput Oradile will be leading us on. So today we're going to be talking about um, a topic is, can Blacks be racist? Racism has always been a topic in South Africa since before, upper, and during our date and after, even in the recent, recent months and weeks, we've been talking about racism. So today, Obed Oradile will be talking about the fact or whether or not Blacks can be racist. Let me just um, give a brief introduction of who Uput Oradile is. Uput Oradile is Oradile Molokwane, a member of the Methodist Church of Southern Africa and a member of the Wesley Guild in Mohali Seket in the Central Synod. Uput Oradile is a computer engineer by profession and he's also a historian at heart and a pan-Africanist. He says, I love Africa. But already, do you really love Africa or is, just, is it just because you're gonna be talking about racism? <laughs> uh, those, those who know me, those I've engaged before, um, they know very well how much I love Africa, how, love, how much I love my people. So it's not a matter of this um, topic. I really okay. do love Africa. Yes. Okay, please engage us, but all right, Tila, so that we can see what exactly you love about Africa and what you would love Africa to be like. <laughs> <laughs> you can you make okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, this is um, uh, my name is uh Oratila Molokwani, as uh Mubego has uh, said. Um, firstly, however, let me give thanks to this opportunity where we are engaging in a topic that it is not very common in our spaces. Um, I don't know if I should say I thank COVID-19 and the lockdown for creating such platforms and we have these, uh, these topics which I think are very, very crucial and essential. Um, my topic um, is a question. Can black people be racist? Um, and let me open by saying, uh, which I will explain later, that we are again engaging white theory, which I hope with time, uh, we won't be engaging in such theories. And I will explain later on why do I deem this topic as, as white theory. And um, before I can give a response to that question, I think also it would be very crucial to try and define, you know, um, and explain what, what racism is. And when, so when you read um, different platforms, when you go into different sessions, because this topic has been exhausted, I want to believe that it has been in many platforms, many times it has been exhausted. And what you, what you gather about racism uh, is that racism is in its basic sense, it is discrimination, prejudice, antagonism um, against a person of a different race. So that is key to note, firstly, that it has to be of a person of a different race. And then second to that, with a belief that you are superior than that person and that person is inferior to you. So it is basically prejudice, um, discrimination, antagonism against a person of a different race or people of a different race uh, with a belief that you are superior to them and them, uh, they are inferior to you. Now, answering that question, um, 
I've had this discussion before, right? And um, I took two different approaches in responding to such a question. Uh, the first one is a bit pragmatic, um, which requires you to be substantive. And then the second approach is a bit theoretical, right? Because when, when you pose a question, can black people be racist? You are in essence questioning their ability to be racist, right? Now, my first approach, which says to you, which, say, which simply says, Black people cannot be racist because one, um, black people don't have the privilege of having power to an extent of relating with people of different race in a sense of believing that they are superior to those people. So those elements on, on their own, they kick out the black nation and black people in general uh, to act or to be racist. And second to that, uh, I think also we need to, and I'm being very subjective on this matter, where I'm saying, where I'm trying to present what I think it is the origin of racism. Now, um, there's a theory called uh, social Darwinism, right? That was coined sometime in the 1800s, which, which claims to say that people who are weak are most likely not to survive and people who are strong um, are most likely to survive. And this theory, it is coined by Thomas Henry where he tries to use uh, the theory that was coined by Darwin, uh, which, which, which he referred to natural selection, where he simply believed uh, in the natural order to the development of species, uh, in, in essence saying the weak die off and the strong survive. So Henry used that theory to to base his argument in what he referred to as social Darwinism, where he says that the weak die off and then the strong uh, will survive, which is basically uh, a theory that emerged in, in Western Europe and, and North America in the 1800s. And this theory, again, it claims uh, uh, the survival of the fittest in economics and and in politics. So, what 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 social Darwinists believe in? Uh, it is that the strong must continue to be wealthy, right, and have more power, whilst the weak uh, must continue to lose uh, any form of wealth and become weaker with time. And this theory gave birth to philosophies like uh, capitalism, for instance, it gave birth to what we have today as racism, right? So it's, it's a foreign um, concept, it's a foreign philosophy, this, 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 this concept of racism. So second to what I've said in my response in saying black people cannot be racist because they don't have the privilege of having power and um, seeing other people as inferior to them. Second to that, it is this submission where I'm saying the philosophy or the concept of racism it is foreign to Africa. And that says then it would be almost impossible for black people to practice a philosophy that they don't even know where it comes from. They don't even understand why it was there they don't even know why, what are the intentions of this, um, of this philosophy of racism. And again, when you read, you understand that racism, it's a social construct that is based on, on claimed to be based on natural selection, right? So to say something is a social construct, you are again 
saying that this thing, it is designed with purpose, right? It has um, particular goals that it seeks to achieve at the end of the day. And again, it being foreign to Africa, we as black people and African, Africans, we, we don't know the originality of racism as I've said before. And therefore it would be almost impossible for us to practice such a philosophy, which is, um, I want to believe is very, very, very foreign um, to us. And again, this theory has given um, different, different uh, books have been written out of this theory. Uh, there's a man called uh, Winwood Reader who wrote a book uh, around that particular time, which he called Savage Africa. And in that book, he refers to black people as savage, right? Uh, and and, and, and in, in, in that definition, he says that um, uh, England and France will rule Africa one day. Uh, Using, using that philosophy of natural selection of saying the weak will die and the strong will survive. So the belief has always been that the weak ones are the black people and then the strong ones are white people. And because of that, philosophies that have been created out of that um, most probably create an illusion, you know, in them that says they, we have to rule because of because we are strong and natural selection will take out um, uh, the black people in that sense. So my response again is, the, is to say black people um, cannot be racist. Now, when, when I take the theoretical approach where again, I say you question the capability because when you say can, uh, you are questioning the capabilities. That is to say, what would then happen should black people find themselves in a position of power? Because we don't know, right? So we cannot entirely, entirely rule out uh, their, their, their possibility to be racist. But I sit, I sit firmly on a foundation that says, even if later on black people can have power. To practice racism, it would be a very challenging task because you cannot practice what you don't know. You cannot practice what you understand, what you don't understand, I mean, you know? So again, um, it is almost impossible for us as black people to, to be racist because we won't know what to do with this philosophy or the concept of, of racism. It is very, very, very foreign to, to Africa. It emanates in, in Western Europe and in North America. So uh, I will pause here for now um, to check if there are any engagements and any questions from what I've said so far. Is it Mubega? Thank you so much, Pujoratile. Um, I'm sorry I got disconnected. Um, there are no there are no questions as yet. Viewers at home, you are welcome to ask questions or comment um, in the comment section, and I'll read them to Pujora or Ratile when 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 you write them down. Um, so, but Oradile, from what you've said so far, can we can we really say um, blacks are not are not cannot be racist? Because I, I believe, for the mere fact that there's a question that asks um, whether black people can be racist, that means there is something or there is an element that um, makes people think black people have been racist or any black people tried to be racist or any show showed um some some characteristics of being racist so is it is, is it only limited to to just power and 
privilege. Can't can't anyone be racist without being privileged or having power? Also, before you you, you respond to that, but Dilele, let me take this opportunity to welcome Umfundi Sumolo, who's um, who just joined, and I'm sure we will be blessed with his contribution um, throughout the the, the, the show. So, Mfun Sumolo, welcome, Dada. We are going to ask you to participate or give us your 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 perceptions or your views on the, on the topic. Please respond to that for Should now. Yes, and I'll check um, more questions from the from the viewers so far. Okay. Uh, thank thanks for 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 that question. Um. My opening statement said we are once again discussing and engaging uh, white theory, right? And I would, I, would, I, would, I would again say we are then therefore restricted. We, we cannot play around with it. We take it as it is. And the definition of, of racism kicks us out as black people because it says you have to discriminate against a person of a different race based on the idea and belief that you are superior than that particular person, right? So discrimination alone, I can discriminate um, and say you white person, but if that, that discrimination, it is not informed by the belief that I think I'm superior than that person, then it is not racism, it is just pure discrimination. I don't know if I've answered your question. You've answered. You've answered my question very well. Nonzaba, um, they on Facebook has has a question, which is almost similar to to mine. He's asking, "What do you mean from 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 what you are saying? What do you mean when you talk about strength? Is it physical or privileged?" when you talk about um, the other race or the other person having strength more than the other, are you talking about physique or privilege? Uh, I think you wanted the, to use uh, superior. Okay. Yes. Uh, I don't think it, it is a matter of physical strength, right? Uh, mm. Because if you were to compare, um, my 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 white friends and the physique of, of African people. We, I think we know where we're going to get. So I think it is just an illusion because remember that this this form of of superiority that they believe they have, it is it is nothing tangible. Because remember that race is um. It's an abstract now, so it doesn't have a concrete definition to it, right? So it is subject to certain beliefs that you have. So it has nothing to do with physical strength. Oh, all right. I don't oh, know I if think, team, so. I, yes. I think you've answered it. I'm not sure if he's satisfied, but I'm satisfied. Um, <laughs> some more that are you here? Okay. I'm here. No, 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 um, we're gonna ask um to just um mute in my um fundusumolo because Okay. <laughs> kind of um, disturbed. 
There's there's a comment from U there's a comment from U put Zaba. I think it's a follow-up from that okay. question you responded to. Um Putoratile. We apologize to viewers for, for that disturbance. We apologize. Please humbly accept our apologies. Uput Nanzaba says, in a case where we have petty because I'm not sure if I'm reading that right, that seeks to promote capitalism and have means of production. I get the view that blacks can't be racist and that's true. But the question is based on the fact that we have black liberals who promote white ideology. There is, a, there is also a view that when blacks start a revolution on race and we, we go to, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure whether he, he wanted to say more, but he pele up, but he's trying to make a point about um, black people. There's a view that blacks start a revolution on race. And I think we get to, to protect them or something along those lines. But yeah, did you get I, the, I think I heard him. Country? Yeah, I, I, I think, I think, I think I heard him talking about black liberals who, liberals who promote capitalism. Right. Um, there is this thing called black capitalism that people uh, supposedly believe in, you know. And whenever I've I've encountered that topic, my question has always been one: that white uh, capitalism, for instance, exploits black people. In essence. If you take out black people out of the equation, white uh, capitalism won't exist, and hence there was a uh, it gave birth to slavery because it needed cheap labor, right? So, if white uh, capitalism wa was exploiting black people, who then will black capitalism exploit? So that has always been my my question in response to what uh, Brother Nzaba ha has said there. Thank you. Thank you, Puti Oratile. Ooh, but Ernest um, Takarlo, I think he's in agreement to what, what you were saying. He says, mm -hmm. on discrimination based on one's color, I can only concur that that's blacks that blacks can be prejudici prejudicial towards whites, not racist. So he sort Definitely. of agrees. With, yeah, yeah, he concurs with what you said. Oh, Sisi Noma Noma says, from your presentation, you've specified why blacks can can't be racist. You say that it's it's because they don't know this philosophy of othering or discrimination. What about Afrophobia? Black people in, in occupied Azania have some financial muscle and they believe that, the, that other Africans are going to take this from them. The incidents of 2008 and 2018 or 2019 illustrate beyond doubt that the preju prejudice that is held by South Africans against fellow Africans. How do you, con how do you contextualize that? Did you, did you get the question from Mo? Uh, Please respond if you-, if you I if think, you I think in, Okay. I think, I think in summary, Sister Noma Kug, right? Um, yes. She's questioning xenophobia. Right? Yeah. 
where we had instances of blacks hating blacks, right? Um, and again, I'm going to refer you to my opening remarks when I spoke of white theory and, and hopefully I'll get time to engage on the danger of white theory into our black spaces because white theory has a tendency of coming in and substituting things that don't even exist. Now, with, with, with what CC has said, which is termed black on black uh, uh, discrimination and largely known as xenophobia, my sub submission has always been that xenophobia does not exist in Africa. You know, uh, we've always had, we have a long history of foreign workers in, in South Africa, our mines, you know, and everywhere. And I have never encountered a South African that says, I hate this person because of this person comes from Zimbabwe. That's what you would call xenophobia. I've never encountered anyone who says, I hate this person because this person comes from Lesotho, right? What, what we've encountered, it is, it is a, a problem of economics, right? Where we find ourselves starving under this, again, foreign philosophy of capitalism, which I hope Africa will get rid of one day. And in starving in this, in this philosophy of capitalism and the government that agreed with white government that it will create jobs, it is now unable to keep up. And now people are fighting for food. It is a matter of, of feeding my stomach to say, um, I also want to eat and I deserve to eat more because I am a bit more whole than you are. So it, it has nothing to do with hate. It is a matter of economics. And 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 um, which I think it it was it was given birth by by capitalism. Thanks, Butora Dile. Um, viewers are engaging. They are they are asking questions. Some are ask, um are commenting. Um, I like how you differentiate between xenophobia and racism and from your opening statement and the way you defined racism, it, it actually does um, give us a clear differentiation between xenophobia and racism. Ooh, this precious Palisa Maneta has a comment which reads as follows. Racism is quite a complex controversial concept. Racism in its, in its nature is the belief that humans may be divided into separate and exclusive biological entities called races. <laughs> She's defining races. That there is a casual link between inherited physical traits and traits of personality, intellect, morality, and other cultural and behavioral features. And that some races are innately superior to others subject to its power to its power subject to power one okay i think she wanted to say one will only give view there's a fine grain gray gray line between racism and white supremacy what can you say about white supremacy and racism but already Please help uh, us get the fine gray line, which was this Palisa is talking about. Uh, uh, I hope I will do, you know, I hope I will do justice to that question because that question requires time and serious meditation, right? Uh, but with, with the definition I've given that, 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 that was extracted from social uh, Darwinism, right, that, that believes in this illusion of superiority, right? So I want, I want to link that illusion of superiority that gave birth to racism to what we refer to as white supremacy, because it is the same. So they, they believe they are superior than us. So I think 
that's what I would say to, to answer uh, the sister's question. Thank you. Thank you, Butoratile. Um, it's clear. It's clear to me. I hope even the viewers understand. Usisi, okay, said he saw. Rory Sang Tom is asking to what extent would you attribute racism in modern society to racial uh, mytho mythologies? To what extent would you attribute? racism in modern society to racial mythologies? <laughs> uh, she would have to define what she means by race, racial mythologies, <laughs> you know? <laughs> she would have to define that to me so that I can at least be on par uh, with her. But so far you, you can just, um, respond okay. according to what you think she means about racial mythology and if she's not satisfied obviously she's gonna ask what what my assumption would be is, is that what has been or what has been created right what systems are there that were founded by racism that's my assumption in understanding that question. And hopefully she will clarify that. And look, one of the points that I wanted to talk about is how we as black people are okay with racism. You know, um, what we are challenged with and we, that's the only time you'll hear us saying anything. It is when then we see the symptoms of racism. And I can easily relate to what happened with clicks recently. Yeah. You know, where if 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 there was no such a, a post or advert by clicks, no one would be calling that institution racist. You know, and maybe even if you can research, you'll find a whole lot of things. And part of thing, part of the things that are racist, it is you might get there and you find that black employees earn lesser than white employees who are occupying the same position. That is that is pure racism, right? But we are okay with these things. As long as you get there, you get your pay, you go home. Up until there's a symptom that that arises from that foundation of racism, and only then. We act. So there's a whole lot of, of, of such institution and there's this thing that they call um, constructive racism, whereby you can't even pick it up. You know, uh, a white person can come to you, you speak English and, and they'll be like, oh, you're so well-spoken, right? And you take it as a compliment and only to find out they are a bit shocked that you're black and you speak English so well, you know? So there are so many places and sports where you find that racism is hugely, hugely, hugely embedded in these spaces, but you won't see it up until there's a particular symptom that comes out like the clicks advert, for instance. I'm glad you mentioned the the clicks advert because I was I was I was I was just about to ask you to to tell us or give us your views with regards to um, the clicks advert. Mfundus Lukolomantin is part of the participants. Welcome, Mfundus Mantini. Ah. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. <laughs> I, I couldn't miss this one. Um, I wanted to hear Aura uh, mm. speaking about racism. I know that it's very close to his heart. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> All right. Okay, Umfunisu Umolo is back to engage with us um, of Aura. Umfunisu Umolo. Hello. 
Welcome back, Tata. Um, we would love to, to hear your views on the topic. The topic says, can blacks be racist? Do you think we, we do have the potential to be racist as blacks? Can we be racist? Thank you very much. Uh, let me start by apologizing for interrupting your earlier speaking. <laughs> Uh, I was busy in the conversation and I was telling a story that umfundis umantini losandu pumangogu no umfundis umwambu vaya zazi stories ama foko foko they will know exactly what I mean uh, I was telling the story that sometimes sometimes they, we hear things about kuma foko foko so I was simply um, telling sorry for, for that I didn't I didn't realize that my mic was on. <laughs> he knows that story very well. I know it. I know it. That. <laughs> Let the sleeping dogs lie. <laughs> anyway, let me come back to your question. I, I, I am happy to see that we are trying to find a distinction between prejudice and, and, and racism. Uh, because indeed, uh, all of us possess the ability to be prejudicial uh, on, 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 on some uh, one or other issue. Black men are prejudicial against, against women. Um, uh, the issue of tribalism has also some prejudice uh, around it. So I'm very happy that we are able to find uh, that distinction between being racist as a power dynamic and being prejudicial as, as, as a state of, call it emotional, irrational uh, uh, definition of self vis-a-vis -vis the other, whoever the other might be. Uh, and therefore there is that distinction that needs to be made. And if you make that distinction, then you must accept that black people do have the potential to be prejudicial uh, and they've found a way to express that in, in many ways. Racism as a phenomenon of, of social power dynamics, uh, as a phenomenon of how society has structured itself uh, from the times of slavery, even before that, black people haven't had the opportunity uh, at least historically, to be racist in the sense that believing that blackness is, is, is what defines their power base and from which they exist and, and, and put their power. So in that, in that reality, um, we cannot say black people are racist because they haven't really had the power to express any prejudice that derives from race that allows them to, to structure society in a way that, that gives black people power. So I, in that sense, I'm very happy to hear that. And I do think it is something worth engaging. We can speculate and speculation is always, is always fraught with danger because you can speculate whether black people, when they have power, will they be like this or like that? Uh, that will be speculating in reality. We will not have, we don't have evidence that can bolster that. So I am happy for that. And I will retreat then to, to hearing the conversation more further because I do want to learn myself. I do want to see where the young people take this conversation forward. Uh, thank you very much. I want to retreat in that sense. Thank you. Thank you so much Mfundis, for your contribution. We appreciate it. We are learning from from about Pambil. Um, there's 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 um there's been um things said amongst the amongst um uh, our fellow Methodists and people from other denominations talking about the MCSA having elements of being racist. Um, they they refer sometimes to the fact that we don't um we we, we don't gather together when we having our services, the whites have their, their service and the blacks have their own service. 
and the fact that we don't uh, we don't see um, whites having uniform while um, we have blacks having uniform. What do you what do you have to say about that? I'd love I'd love for you, Oratile, to 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 respond and also Umfundu Sumolo to respond and even Umfundu Mantini if he has uh, <laughs> something to say with regards to this. Since we are Methodists, and this is a page, Yewesley Guild, which is a, um, an organization, a movement, yes, a Methodist church, so we must address those things. Uh, hey, you're putting me in a tight corner here, uh, because I don't want to wake oh. up and tomorrow I am <laughs> sad that the Methodist church is, is racist. Uh, firstly, let me... Uh, Give greetings to Mongo, Mkulo uh, Amatot. It's been a while. And uh, my former BMC uh, chairperson here in Central Synod, Mfundi uh, Sumol. Look, I don't want to say the Methodist Church is racist, you know, um, but church as we know it, um, we know how it was founded. Right, um, its colonial intent, its colonial uh, participation, and segregation laws. Um, I for, I, for, I forget that that law that was passed that required church to to be separated, whereby blacks and white people cannot uh, convene together. You know that where. Um, the Methodist Church even took a stance of one and undivided church a while back, but only in theoretical sense. When when you look at the practicality and you read on the practicality and you question on the practicality of that one and an undivided church, you you notice that it, it, it is not uh, existing, right? And hence, also you find today that white people can't even convene with black people in the same service. They will have their own service, uh, which they believe they are privileged to. I tell you, if you are to tell them to switch to 11, and then we, we, we take the 7 a.m. slot, you will see miracles because they feel entitled to those spaces and all of that. Um, so in essence, I'm avoiding to say to you, the Methodist church is racist. Uh, let me retreat. <laughs> this is my Is this is no way I still there. 